Welcome, everyone. Good to see you. Hello, Vicky, Fran, Dana, Renee, Dan, Sue. I think even the Brian D. Harden is here. Got to love that. I tried to manipulate him tonight. <laughs> you hear me, Brian? <clears throat> I sent him a message tonight. I said, hey, Brian, you want to do a – what are you doing tonight is what I asked him. He said, I'm helping a friend build a video studio in Utah. I was going to say, hey, bud, why don't we do a – broadcast tonight but he already told me his plan so i left it at that but i'll get brian back on really soon brian and i two peas in the same pod let me see if i can get something real quick March 11th, announcement, March 11th, I'm going to be at Unity Church on Walnut Grove, 5 p.m. This is in Cardova, Tennessee. I'm going to do a presentation on radical transformation. My first live presentation in a long time. I'm excited to kick off a speaking tour, which is somewhat what this center of light burst is going to be about. Angelo Rapin, world-renowned classical award-winning symphony pianist for the Memphis Symphony, is going to create a soundscape underneath. In fact, he's the one you hear under this music um, with Lavender Soul. In a minute, as I'm dialoguing with you, when it comes to Angelo um, playing a solo or whatever, I'm going to turn it up. He's going to wow you. So uh, welcome to this broadcast, y'all. The title is Ebb and Flow, and I want to say thanks to Renee Brown for instigating this title. She gives me really good titles, and uh, sometimes it's about what's going on in her life or using her spiritual wisdom and looking out and about and seeing things moving other people. Sometimes I get congested, and I can't really think of a title because I'm so close to all of my work. So thanks, Renee. <laughs> so what I was talking about, I think this is Angela about to rip it up. Mm. So where this connects with my life as far as ebb and flow, and what things are happening with me. I'm in a major transition in my life right now. Major. This was very, very major for me. Meaning, it seems to be bittersweet. It is bittersweet. There we go. Bittersweet because it looks like, it feels like, I'm most sure that my life in the music industry is going to come to a slow crawl. Slow crawl. I've been wanting to get out and about and do my spiritual work for many years. Many years. Out and about, on the road. Because I like people. No, let me rephrase that. I love people. And I love giving back. For the last two and a half years, this guy, <laughs> I did not stop musically. I was playing five times a week, sometimes more, sometimes four. Maybe sit between five times a week, give or take. Sometimes twice a day. And every once in a while, three times a day. And I loved every minute of it. And I'd do it all over again. And I'd still be doing it. My rock band, Grand Theft Audio, dissolved. For no reason. There was no bad grass between any of us. We never we never had a, nothing like that 
has ever happened in my rock band, Grand Theft Audio, ever. Not even an, an ill word spoken to any one of the band members from someone else, never. Life changes. I didn't like it, to be honest with you, at first. I didn't like it at all. What can I do about it? Nothing. One of the members just decided he wanted to do something different. And I get it. Totally understood. It's his life. I wish him absolutely the best. And if he needs $5 for gas to get to his gig with a new band, I'm going to give him $5. <laughs> So that came to a grinding still. I do still hire out as a bass player for, and singer for those who need it. My acoustic gigs all went away. I can be on the phone, and I do sometimes, make phone calls to generate a, a piece of work here or there. I'm okay with it. I will forever play music, and that is my satisfaction, and that fills me. I know because it's not a choice of mine to ever leave music. In fact, it's impossible because it is who I am. All my gigs are gone, except my Monday night open mic. I have gigs, but to the level I was doing it, they're all just falling away. Being in touch... with this divine man... Unity is our strength. Humanity is our life. This man has done something to me. When I say man, let me give him the respect he deserves. He's a divine man. God in the form of a human being on this earth. The truth does not need anyone's permission to exist. God in the form of a human being on this earth. I've been blessed to have him physically well, energetically do things to me when he's standing next to me. Taps me on my lower spine and sends energy through my body. That's the whole spiritual journey. It's to, whether we know we're doing it or not, people in the Hindi tradition know it because that's part of the dynamic of graduating to God. It's to raise the kundalini energy all the way to the crown chakra. This grounds you on the earth down here behind your back. And the top of your head is the seat of the soul. This is where God is. If, if you ever look at the medical staff, the caduceus, the medical staff, and there's two snakes, almost like DNA, intertwined all around the caduceus, around this shaft, this pole. That is the kundalini energy rising up through the, from the, the base of the spine to the top of your head. Heal. Hence, medical feel is about healing and being the best human you can be. Hence, the caduceus in the medical field, what it represents in the Hindi religion. To be well, to be in a state of well-being. Expanded well-being. So this man taps me on my spine and sends me through light fields, stargates. Last time I interviewed him, he grabbed my hand. He was explaining to me how we are all connected to the source. There's no way we can't be. To think otherwise is arrogance. To think that we could be connected to the source, I mean, to think that we can sustain this life and everything in it, about it, and how it moves, how it ebbs and flows, hence the title of this presentation, without being connected to the source is arrogance. It's also ignorance. So being connected to the source, when I asked Swanji this question in an interview, he said, just like a light bulb in everyone's house, the same current from the same generator supplies everyone's home with electricity. The same current, the same source, the same generator supplies everyone with life. 
and he grabs my hand after he starts explaining this dynamic to me, this model of how we're all connected to God. He says, here, let me show you. And he grabs my hand. When he grabbed my hand, he begins to subtly pump energy into my being. Imagine if he wanted to, he could probably have blown my head off. And everyone in the room felt it. Everyone shifted. But I was the fortunate one. And I've experienced love in my body. To a divine level. If you want to watch that interview, because it's a powerful interview in and of itself, but to see this event, this particular thing that transpired when Swamji pumped me full of his light, <sighs> let me know. I'll send it to you. <sighs> I know that a lot of these video feeds I do seems like Keith talks about himself and I'm full of myself. Both are true. I am full. I am self-full. And the reason I bring this up is because I'm just an average Joe. I am the guy next door. And everyone knows that I'm reachable. That I'm a very personable individual. And my connection with you, you know how real and solid that is. It's not fake. It's not plastic. It's not put on. Because I realize the nectar in life is meaning it. I can never be plastic ever again. Because once you taste the nectar and the ambrosia and the amrith from having a divine connection like I have with Swansea, but when you have it with the people around you in your life and you treat them as the ebb and flow of spirit happens in their and your life, when you get to that cosmic current, current, it's a current just like the electricity. When you get in the current, Things begin to move. They begin to ebb and flow. So the reason I'm telling you this about my leaving the music scene, I am looking for music work for now. But I am going to take my heart, my power, my love, my sincerity, and my passion on the road. And I'm going to begin to empower people because that gift was given to me many years ago. And when I heard the truth, it set me free. What is that truth? You may ask. That the source of everything that ever was, is, and will ever be lives right there. There's your liberation. That is your spiritual liberation. I was talking with my marketing director last week, Miss Renee Brown, and I shared something with her that was very, very personal. No one knows this about me. And I don't know if I will ever, but if ever I feel prompted, I will. But I shared something with her about a past reincar reincarnation of mine. The point of it all is I had put the divine principle my bestseller thanks to Renee Brown who made me a bestseller. <laughs> I made a prototype of it when I first started because I was, I was happy-go-lucky. I was excited. I'm channeling cosmic shit, right? I want to see what this was going to look like in a book. So I fashioned it very prematurely. In fact, after the first year I started as a way of creating a book. It was playtime. I wanted to create a book. That was my intention. And on the back cover, after I shared Renee with Renee, something very, very personal. This is what it said. <laughs> As you continue to become conscious of yourself, 
The shackles of fear, control, and anguish will fall from your ankles. The wounds, calluses, and scars, all self-created with the hopes to protect, can now fade into healing. The payoff, soul expansion into divine conscious recall. In this marriage with divine parent, you have creative freedom, power, and light. And the expansion and the expression of these forces will propel God in you. Cultivate your divine soil. Remove all weeds and prepare a healthy garden for planting sacred seeds of love and light. This is the highest thing you can do for yourself and begins the process of eternal liberation. That's why I am not afraid about a lifestyle change. I'm welcoming it. Welcoming it. I'm excited. Hyper excited. In fact, so much so, I'm telling you about it. And you're the first. Is it nerving? Yes, it is. It's nerving. Not so much so. Yeah, it's just all a little. It is a little nerving. Let's be honest about that, Keith. It is a little nerving. But that's the bittersweet. Because in the contrast of it being nerving and super exciting, in between those two is a third thing. And that third thing is, it's juicy. It can't be confined nor defined by the super excitement nor the super nerving. Those two are the extremes of what that thing in the middle is. <laughs> So tonight's broadcast is about ebb and flow. Brian says, who is that guy on the right? He looks like a bass player from Memphis. I uh, don't know what he's talking about. Who's the guy on the right? Of course, I'm sure there's a, a joke in there somewhere. Renee says, self-realization. Do both. Brian says, do both. Yeah, Brian, I'm, I'm always going to do both. But I'm going to have to step away from it for a little bit. So I can walk into the window. So I can really walk into that window and say, this is what I'm doing now. This is going to be a companion. And also, Brian, Renee um, is going to work with me. But when I do gigs out of gigs, presentations out of town, why not get to town the night before? Do a gig the night before or the night after. Announce it to my listening audience is what I'm doing while I'm in their city. So I can do both. And that would be cool. Now I get to hang out with people I've never met and do my thing. Hello, Kayleen. Fran says, love it. A friend used to call that cosmic editing. <laughs> so tonight we're talking about ebb and flow. I'm going to read to you a little bit from the divine principle. From my bestseller, I ask you to reflect on your body and see it as one living organism housing billions of cells, skin cells, liver cells, brain cells, blood cells, and so on. All of them encapsulated in one wrapping of flesh. This holds true for the earth as well, where there are billions of individual cells called people who differ from one another in personality, appearance, sex, and race. Humans are embraced by a much larger organism, earth. Humans are to earth as cells are to humans. From micro to macro, the universal design is the same. Atomic to cellular, cellular to body, body to world, world, uh, solar, world to solar, solar to galactic, galactic to stellar, stellar to universal. All systems spin around one central source. Atoms and cells have elements spinning around one central source called the nucleus. And you and Earth spin around one central source called the sun. The solar system revolves around the Milky Way galaxy with that huge cluster of stars at its center. Galaxies rotate around the cosmos and the universe revolves around God. The great central sun. 
I know you have heard the expression, he thinks the world revolves around him. Well, this is the truth of it. Everything revolves around me, spirit, for it is I that spins all into life. And I say, it sounds pretty simple. As I always say, spirituality is not difficult. And I say to spirit, it sounds pretty simple. I mean, as far as how you have things laid out, spirit says, yes, it is so simple that without forcing anything, truth brings about the natural flow of life and light that allows the divine to be omnipresent. This is just the way it is. I do not even judge it, for it is what it is. Speaking about flow, ebbing and flowing. I must find a way to play with words to help you understand what I am conveying and most especially to enable you to grasp. Mm, that hit me hard to grasp some inkling of the wholeness that I am. This is speaking spirit speaking. <laughs> Ebb and flow, right? So spirit wants to play with some words to make a point. So we can see the wholeness that spirit is. And when we get in the flow with, there's no difference than you and spirit because it's moving you. It is you. It becomes part of you. You become married to your divine parent. Spirit says, look at the word external. E-X-T-E-R-N-A-L. E-X-T-E-R-N-A-L. Notice its similarity to the word eternal. Observe that there is just one difference. The X in the word external crosses out and interrupts the flow of the word eternal. <laughs> this is exactly what happens to your consciousness when you choose to live in external mode. You cross out all your chances for eternity. And so the current of your life will go until the time when you're able to live in unbroken flow. If you honestly seek union with me, you must hold steadfastly to your intentions and be ever vigilant. When you achieve this life mode, your next death cycle will be a divine birth. And I ask spirit, is that what it means to be reborn? Spirit replies, not quite, beloved. Let me make, let me be perfectly clear. Clear. Birth's intention is to not be born again. And death's intention is to never again die. Mm. The intentions of both are the same. To give you every possible chance to consciously unify with all that is. Now, whether you or not choose to go along with this program is entirely up to you. Okay, let me liken this to my lifestyle, how it's changing. And I'm talking about me because it's me. I know me. And I want to impart this to you so that you can take what I'm offering and apply it to your life in this very simple wisdom. But I'm going to read this paragraph again, and I'm going to like it to my life. Is that what it means to be reborn? Let's liken my life before I pose that question to spirit, just to be my life as a musician and doing these live feeds once in a while. An older me, so to speak. Is that what it means to, re -be -born, to be reborn? Spirit says, not quite, beloved. Let me be perfectly clear. Birth's intention, this new birth in my life, is to not be born again. So finally moving to the window of what I've been wanting to do for years, and I know it's going to be the closing chapter of my life of transitions as far as lifestyle and livelihood. 
Birth's intention is to not be born again, and death's intention is to never again die. The intentions of both are the same, to give you every possible chance to consciously unify with all that is, with all that is happening to me, at least for me. Now, whether I, whether you, I choose to go along with this program is entirely up to me slash you. I'm not in the fight of it. I thought about this for a while since my band GTA split up and it's been on mine. I loved it. We are a powerful rock band. Dear Lord, it was great. Everybody was serious about their musicianship and everybody could sing. It was phenomenal. And we still do a gig here and there, a spotted gig. Are you in the flow in your life? Are you in the flow in your life? When you look out and about and see what's happening in the world, in your life, not the world, but your life and the reflection of your life in the world, does something have you boogered? Something have you bothered? Something you don't understand? Whatever that is for you. What it is, is simply not being able to recognize spirit in that aspect of your life. That's it. That's it. Dan says sometimes, one moment. Dan says sometimes what we cling to is what is actually stagnating us and needs to be let go of. Yes, sir. It's exactly what it is. Sue says, I don't always come out and say a lot. I am a listener and you have helped me to know my spiritual direction. It's because of you, Sue. People like you beautiful people like you that move me. I'm a listener and you have helped me to know my spiritual direction. You have inspired me to keep walking my spiritual path when I wanted to give up. Mm. Without you giving your help and guidance, I will not have had access to so much information through lack of money. This is the same with Charlene and Andrea. Awesome. I would like to thank you. I'm so grateful. Sweetheart, you're welcome. I, 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 I'm I the one that used to say thank you because of I get to play in the arena of the energy that's moving in my body right now. So I'm the one that owes you a thank you. Are you, look, are you seeing flow in your life? That's not always about flow. Let's get this correct. Let's, let's speak reality here. Things have to ebb in order for them to flow. The temperature, the thermostat in your house cannot maintain a constant 72 degrees by ebb and flow. If it's, there is an ebb and flow to keep your house at a consistent 72 degrees. The thermostat kicks on, the thermostat kicks off, the thermostat kicks on, the thermostat kicks off. There's an ebb and a flow. The ebb, it turns off, and now the, or when it kicks on, the air is flowing through your house. It's a natural state. But ebb does not have, and so ebb does not have to imply a lacking. It's just a withdrawing of the energy so that it can come back around and push. And it's like a swing. Imagine yourself being on a park, at a park, on a swing. You don't judge the forward motion, and you don't judge the backward motion. It's the swing. It's the teeter-totter. It's riding the divine current. Ebb and flow is riding the divine current and getting out of the way of what you think you're in. Because what can be a flow could seem like an ebb, and what could seem like an ebb could be a flow. And in fact, that's not even important. Those labels are not even important. 
you know, which one do you like more, the front motion on the swing in the park or the back motion on the swing in the park? You don't really judge it. You just know that you're swinging. LaDonna says, well, we need to listen to you on the Levith and get you a love offering. Ah, uh, yes, yes. And I'm glad you said that, LaDonna. I have not put this on these flyers I've been making for March 11th. There is an admission, and the admission is $20. And I, I debated about that for a while, and then I threw myself completely out of the debate and said, you know what, I've been doing this a long time. And sometimes people value something they buy, something they pay for, because there's a value to it. And I've been doing this a long time, and I want to be, I want to make this my new lifestyle. And I do have to move about and put fuel in my car. All that being said, I will never, ever, ever, ever in my life turn anyone away. Anyone wants to come to the event and you don't have 20 bucks, just give me a love up. Just provide a love offering. The love offering is not only for me. The love offering is for you. It's, it's an offering to love, which is a, it's just another ceremony to connect your spirit. I don't have the 20 bucks. I have 10. I have five. It's like putting ash on your forehead to say, I'm just using it as an excuse to offer something to love. It creates a greater connection. It creates for makes for a greater experience. So it's going to be $20 for those who can. And for those who can, awesome. And for those who can't, awesome. Just come. Celebrate and delight in your life. Dan says... Thanks, Kay. You told me once in chat that maybe sometime that maybe someone would benefit from what I have to say. I realized that I was keeping spirit, not sharing it. And, bro, we're going to get you to be doing some speaking real soon. Next week, I believe. Uh, I think Tuesday, you and I talked about, well, a while back, you and I talked about the near future. Which Tuesday of next week, Dan, looks good to me uh, to have you do a head-to-head, -head, heart to heart so tonight we're talking about ebb and flow. And I don't mean flow on Mel's diner. Mel, kiss my grits. Anyone in the room by chance having something in their life that they're not wrecking spirit in. They're not seeing the ebb and the flow, the balance of the dance. Just, you know, is it money? Is it this? Is it that? Something you're just not able to see the manifestation of your self in said aspect of your life, any area of your life. Ah, LaDonna, you sweet. Thank you, Angel. Do another reading from the Divine Principle. I looked up the word flow in the divine principle. World leaders and government. The true agenda of many governments and governmental figures. This was channeled in 1996. World leaders and government. The true agenda of many governments and governmental figures worldwide will be brought to light. The United States, the greatest country of all, with the greatest form of government, will suffer a major breakdown. It's happening right now. Its present legislative branch will collapse, and it will take years to rebuild it. Because of this restoration process, many old guard politicians will be forced out. Your new lawmakers will not make law per se, but rather will introduce you to divine law and teach you how to fall into flow with it. The establishment of divine order is commencing as I speak. Freedom, getting into the flow. 
getting into the flow, the result of that is freedom. <laughs> it's freedom. Hello, Eddie. See y'all's here. Freedom is the result of getting in the flow. Freedom from slavery, captivity, or any form of arbitrary control. Departure from rules or procedures. Freedom. When you get to the flow, there are no rules. Rules do not exist in flow. You can also see ebb and flow as like a slingshot. That's the ebb. You let go, and that's the flow. The ebb, it creates the power. It creates the push. It creates the mm. It creates the ass. It creates the gas. That's what the ebb is. The ebb is the power. It's drawing back so it can launch. And when it launches, down the slide you go at a water park. <laughs> You're in the flow. And when you end that flow, in fact, it's the ebb that shatters all the illusion of any form of control or rules. The pulling back of the cycle of the water, of the ocean, of the energy, the wave, the human dynamic, the human energy wave dynamic, whatever it is, the pulling back of it is what creates the power that will lunge you forward with force. Ebb and flow. Draw back. When you see that your life, it's time for your life to draw back, don't clamp down and try to anchor yourself in something that's going to knock you on your butt. Move with it. It's pulling you back. So it can finally, once again, release you like a slingshot. And out you go with the force. Again, the analogy is my music life is coming to a slow halt. So instead of me resisting that idea, I'm allowing it to pull me back to collect power in a state of rest so that I can be pushed forward into flow. As you continue to aligning yourself with God, you will need some tools to remove any weeds that may still be stifling the growth of your spirit's fruit. <whistles> Till that fertile ground thoroughly so that it can germinate the seeds of love and grow God in you. And of course, I'm being my funny self. I asked spirit, <laughs> what can I use as my miracle grow? Right now, prayer. For it will fertilize the soul experiences that you so long to have. It will help you to be ever more conscious and stay in the flow, allowing such things to happen more frequently, more ebb and flow, ebb and flow. So the, it's, the ebb doesn't just happen once in a while, and the flow doesn't happen once in a while. When you get into the, the river, the river of life, the conscious life stream, this thing starts doing this. The, interval, the, the energy wave begins to move. Because it's high frequency. When you're in low frequency, life seems to be like this. It's a drag. It's ups and downs. But when you get to this kind of energy, high vibrational energy, the light, the divine light is what begins to happen within you. And then you in ebb and flow, ebb and flow. And the miracles continue to happen out of nowhere all the time. People you have not seen in a long time just show up. Last night, I did a gig. This guy walks in, and he, I think he was deaf or whatever. And he starts drawing a picture of me. And I knew, I knew that's what he was doing. And I wasn't sure if I had any money in my wallet. And I had a very large bill and a small bill. Well, I thought to myself, he's not going to get the very large one. That's for sure. But Aunt and I gave him a dollar. And I thought this gentleman is using his God-gifted talent, his connection to source, his creative ability of God as creator, his aspect of spirit that he brought into this reality, into this life, and wanted to give me a gift, uh, took the time to draw me. I looked in my wallet again, and lo and behold, I found some other bills. So I gave him a total of 
He said, thank you. No, he actually nodded and he walked off. So I tapped him on the arm before he left. And I said, look me in the eyes. And I said, thank you. And he said, oh, yeah, yeah. Five minutes later, two different events, he left. Someone else walks in and sees me setting up for the open mic. Walks up, walks up to me and hands me 16 $1 bills. He said, I'm going to get the pump prime before you even start playing. 20 minutes later, the same guy on his way out the door walked up to me and gave me three more, three $5 bills. And I have no doubt whatsoever. Well, Keith, that's just coincidence. Exactly as coincidence. Two things coincided to have this expression of my ebb, which put me in the flow. My giving that gentleman the money was the ebb. It was the power. It rocketed. It propelled me forward into the flow of someone turning around and giving me five times the abundance I gave the gentleman who drew the picture of me. Ebb and flow. Maybe when things are not the way you think they should be, or you're not recognizing spirit in any aspect of your life, one, it could be, I just haven't found it yet. And that's cool. That's a beautiful, purposeful place to be. Or it could be that, I don't see what you're talking about, Keith, and that's okay too. But it also could mean that you're just in an ebb right now. You're being pulled. You're being saved. You're being prepared. So that when the season comes, and you're ready, you get a push. The life cycle, ebb and flow, as this title, this presentation is, life cycle, ebb and flow. The life cycle of your seed that I just asked Spirit about begins to burst through the topsoil. And I ask, what should I use as my miracle grow? Right now, prayer, for it will fertilize the soul experiences that you so long to have. It will help you to stay ever vigilant, conscious, Allowing such things to happen more frequently. Ebb and flow, ebb and flow. So now the vibration of your life is like this. Magical place to be in. <laughs> this is powerful. Ebb, flow, giver, receiver, father, mother, unmanifest, manifest, ebb, flow, life, cycle. Do me a favor. Do you a favor. Take a breath, just a breath. I want to feel my divine parent in my body, in my consciousness right now. kind of breath <laughs> ebb flow father mother give a receiver manifest unmanifest after a farmer plants seeds into his fertile field he never disturbs them by digging them up to see if they are germinating he does not have to he knows that soon enough sprouts will emerge from the soil and soon enough his garden will yield a bountiful harvest. All the while, he is humbled by the potential that lies within each seed, Spirit says. Such is my relationship to you as father, farmer, giver of seed. As a wife takes her husband's seed deep into her womb and conceives. It is then that the universal intelligence begins to move from the causal realm of the unmanifest to the physical world of the manifest. It is then that the cosmic body assembles all the parts necessary to bring a child into the world. When the wife discovers she is with child, 
Her joy and excitement overflow because she realizes that she has been given one of the greatest gifts. She knows that soon enough, the child will be with her in the physical world. So she trusts the process all the while going about her daily routine. In just nine months, when my fruit has ripened within her, another precious being begins its life on earth. Such is my relationship to you as mother, recipient, bringer of harvest. God is life. Life is God. From the unmanifest to manifest with simple intent. Is that simple or what? I say, I'd say that's pretty simple. All right. And Spirit says, simple it can be for you too. When you live your life like the farmer and expectant mother. When you plant your seeds and turn your life over to God. Then go about your day to day all the while bringing your new life into being. Ebb and flow. Life cycle. Simple it can be when you have trust and patience. It is then that you can expect Miracles. Renee says, Love the swing analogy. <laughs> yeah. Eddie says, Amen, brother. Amen to you, bro. Well, Donna Pressgrove says, Well, I've closed out the monkey mind, the noise, and I'm ebbing and flowing. I'm meditating, and, and anxiety is leaving my mind. LaDonna shared with me the other day that since her and I met, at least on social media, and I do these broadcasts, that she's void of anxiety. Dig it. It's not about me. It's about the fact that she received some information from anyone. She applied it to her life. Now she's ebbing and flowing. Ebb and flow, the life cycle. When you find that your life is pulling you, into your direction, even if it's kicking your butt and pulling you. Go with it. Lean into it because you can't resist it. It's going to pull you regardless. So your best ploy is to let it pull you and find yourself balanced in the scenario. Because once you're balanced in the scenario, then you're not wobbly in the scenario. And if you're not wobbly in the scenario, you have clarity. And if you have clarity, you have power. And they have, if you have power, you can change the whole dynamic. That's called being conscious. That is spiritual consciousness. Being in the flow. How do I know I'm in the flow? There's no effort. There's no struggle. Old friends from years back show up. Phone call from people you never met show up. People just thought I'd give you money for no reason. That today if you woke up in the morning and thought, I wonder how I can make some extra money today. And you might. But out of nowhere, someone shows up through an avenue that you never even thought about that could be possible and hand you $5. Now you've expanded and learned a new way that $5 can come into your experience. That's flow. That's ebb and flow. So I will take some questions if anyone has any. Uh, my brother Dan says, Love doesn't work like magnets. It draws more love. How juicy is that? <laughs> All right, y'all, it's been my time. If any, one final refresh here. If anyone has anything you would like to ask, uh, share. I'd appreciate it. I'm going to be posting Radical Transformation again before I leave. This type of banner really soon and a lot because it's going down this Sunday, 5 o'clock. 
you sharing it would fill my heart with joy. I'm going to put the admission price, which is $20. I will never turn it in anyway. One way. If you can't afford $20, show up anyway. Give what you got. It ain't about the money. Give yourself. Bring you to the event. Even if you have no money, bring you to the event and give. Ebb yourself to flow into this event. Get there early. I would love to meet and greet with you. If you're not from the Memphis area, a road trip is always nice. I might be playing. In fact, I'm playing music that weekend. If you happen to come to town a little early, a day early, if you want to go to hang out and hear this cool presentation with this awesome pianist and hang out with some phenomenal people, you're in town, contact me, I'll tell you where I'm playing. <laughs> It'd be great. So again, the question I pose, did it freeze when I was, did the video go off when I was announcing people's names? Because I did look on Facebook to see who all was here that this particular Software does not show who is in the room. Either way, I'll figure it out when I watch it back. I think I'm going to close with a piece of Lavender Soul music. I guess I won't. Because I turned it off. <laughs> Huh. It froze about five minutes ago. My guess <clears throat> it could be internet traffic. We find lavender soul and go out with a piece of lavender soul music. Again, as always, I appreciate y'all being here. You have my heart. Go to this folder where I know things is. Play. Remember that all things are possible. I'm going to play Renee's favorite song. One night I came home from a gig. I had a bunch of people in my house. I had a violin player in my house. Late night party. I bust out the acoustic. He goes, man, do you mind if I go get my violin? I said, no, he had a fiddle. I said, go get it. And I started playing this riff, this guitar, the structure of chords on a guitar. I had a song. So I titled the song Breathe. <sighs> Powerful song. It ebbs and flows. Listen to the piano solo in here by that gentleman in the coat. <laughs> Pull you away. So again, y'all, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'll be seeing you soon. Radical Transformation, March 11th. Lavender Soul. Song called Breathe. Trust that I will guide you in whatever you do. Just remember to breathe. And do your very best to live in love. Give in love. Be in love. And love you shall receive.
That music is very liberating, especially that end segment. Opens you up, takes you back home to the source of where we came from. I look forward to seeing you March 11th for Radical Transformation. Life is a series of ebbs and flows. Get into it. Dig into it. Be happy in it. I love you.